This video was brought to you by my loyal patrons. Pledge today and you can participate in choosing what video comes to the channel next. Link in the description. This is the island of Sodor. The island is covered in railway lines. The railway connects all of Sodor into one cohesive network. From the sunny paradise beaches on the west coast, to the beautiful scenic mountain ranges in the north. In the south is the island's biggest port, Brendam Docks. It is here where all the ships come in, bringing visitors, cargo, and even engines from all around the world. Many ships calls for many cranes to unload them, and there is one crane here that works harder than all the rest. His name is... Cranky. Cranky by name, Cranky by nature. Cranky is a high and mighty dockside crane. As all cranes are, he sees himself above the engines, figuratively and literally. At least, he did at one point. Sarcastic, impatient, rude, and easily irritated, Cranky lives up to his name. Lifting and loading, loading and lifting, always working, always stuck in the same place. It's not easy being a dockside crane. However, there is a streak of sympathy with Cranky. He's not just cranky because the likes of his co-worker Salty annoying him. There's a little more there than meets the eye. And today, we're going to examine that. Much like Hero before, Cranky is one of the TV exclusive characters and doesn't have a rich backstory from the original Railway series books like most of the other characters. So instead of going through each era one by one, I'm going to change it up a little bit today and talk about Cranky's character from his very first episode to his final one. For a character that is stuck in place and cannot move, he has trekked quite a journey over the years. So let's deconstruct this construction and see what Cranky's really all about. We'll start in 1998. Whoops. Cranky has the honor of being the first ever exclusive non-Audrey character introduced in the TV series. Technically, Smudger was the first, <laughs> but he is just the TV version of number two in the books, so I don't count him. Cranky, however, is 100% original and made his debut in the season five premiere episode, Cranky Bugs. Despite being what is now a staple character of the series, Cranky didn't actually do all that much in the model era of the show. He's consistently in it, but all his appearances are mostly just remarks or comments to the engine characters. My, my, Henry, I expect you'll have some fishy tales to tell, but take my advice, have a long hose down first. You useless little engines are always in the way. Hey, you down there, your job's done now, these lorries are taking over. He's very rarely the focus of episodes. I have found that there are three episodes I can point to regarding Cranky's character journey in the model era. Cranky Bugs from Season 5, of course, No Sleep for Cranky from Season 6, and Hide and Peep from Season 11. Let's dive in. Cranky Bugs was Cranky's first appearance, and here he is depicted as a new crane who is rude and nasty to the little engines. A crane was causing trouble. His name is Cranky, and this was his first day at the docks. Your useless little bugs, he called from above. I love this initial concept of Cranky. A crane is a good concept for a character who views himself above others, because he is literally above them. 
It works figuratively and literally. Gordon and James do a fine job of describing him. Cranes are hairy fairy things. They need a lot of attention, like me, in fact. He's high up in the air, coping with wind, rain, and baking sun. Then he looks down and sees you two little engines being annoying. In this episode, and the rest of the season, Cranky is basically just an obstacle for the engines. He's insulting, he's impatient, rude, and a bit of a trickster. Come on, come on, push those trucks closer to me. Poor Percy. He does get his comeuppance in this episode, when a ship crashes into the dock and causes him to topple over. Ah! Help! Called the engines from inside the shed. I can't! Called Cranky pathetically. And while he does learn his lesson by the end of the episode, Cranky doesn't really change for the most part. He still teases, is still rude, and still complains in the following episodes. You should look up to ships and show more respect. You are, after all, only little. He's just a jerk. And that's because, in this season, we're viewing him from the engine's perspectives. What happens when we go a little closer? Season 6 shook things up a bit. In this season, we got No Sleep for Cranky, the first and only Cranky-centric episode of the model series. In this episode, we get to see the world through Cranky's eyes, and they show us a day in the life of a crane that can't physically move. It's unsurprisingly very unexciting. He's always expected to work day in, day out. If a ship comes in, Cranky's awake to unload it no matter the time, with no one all the way up there to keep him company besides the gulls. It is only company or the gulls that settle on his arm. We learn why he's always so irritated all the time, why he's called cranky. He becomes a shockingly sympathetic character. Ahoy there, cranky, cried Salty. Where have you been, snapped cranky. And a good day to you too, Captain. We're also introduced to the salty and cranky dynamic in this episode, and I just love everything about it. Salty is the perfect character to contrast the crane. Salty is so gung-ho and chipper and loves to talk. Contrast with the irritated, pessimistic, just wants to be left alone, cranky. So it's company you be needin', said Salty. Reminds me of a lonely old Grand Banks lighthouse keeper. Not another one of your stories, cried Cranky. The Spongebob and Squidward of Thomas, everyone. This dynamic between the two is hardly ever touched on again in the model series, but they do play with it a lot later on in CGI. After this episode, Cranky's role in the show is fairly minor, getting a line in once or twice a season. It was unusual to get any focus on him. He more so was just a prop at Brendam Docks, something to dispense dialogue to the other characters. Hurry up, slow coach! Wished Percy. I must be on time! I'll take as long as I like. You must wait for the engineer to lower the mast, snapped Cranky. I'm here to pick up the cargo, said Toby sadly. The ship's been caught in rough seas. The cargo won't be here till morning. Season 11 did change things up a little bit by making Cranky a somewhat major player in the episode Hide and Peep. In typical hit-era fashion, the episode focuses on Thomas and Percy being children and playing hide-and-seek while they wait for a ship to come in. Cranky wants to play, but Thomas tells him he's too tall to. Can I play? he asked. You're much too tall to hide, Thomas laughed. Cranky felt left out. I don't know what kind of response you were expecting from that, Cranky. Like, did you forget that you can't move? In the end, though, he turns out to be rather useful, and spot Percy in the distance when Thomas can't find him. He ended up being able to play after all. You are the best finder. Cranky was very pleased. Yay! Yeah, there's not much to this episode. It is consistent with what we know of Cranky, though. Cranky being left out and lonely because he's so separated from the others. So how did he transition into CGI? 
Much like how the first episode of the first non-Audrey season was a cranky episode, the first full CGI episode is also a cranky episode. Weird parallel there. Good morning, Cranky. What's good about it? There's not a whole lot going on in Creaky Cranky. It's pretty standard fare for a Nitrogen era outing. Cranky says he's stronger than Thomas, and Thomas tries to disprove it by making Cranky lift the heaviest things he can find, including himself. Planet Crank. They get scolded, Thomas makes it right, and they apologize to each other. A pretty standard three strike formula outing for this era, but I will say, it's not as dull as other episodes, and I think that mostly comes down to the fact that they're actually doing something with Cranky again. Seeing Cranky actually do stuff for the first time since, gosh, season 6 is somewhat remarkable. I feel like this episode was a turning point for the character, cause suddenly following this, Cranky started being more involved in episodes. I have to wonder if the fact he's CGI now was a key part of this. You might notice that back in the model series, whenever they made Cranky spin or perform an action, the footage is sometimes sped up or there's a wire pulling him in the background. More often than not, when he's talking, he's just static. This makes me believe that the Cranky prop was either very, very heavy and moved slowly, or it just wasn't super functional and probably limited what they could do with him on camera. Now in CGI, Cranky can swing freely and lift anything and they can get epic ground perspective shots of him. Just a theory, of course. Something notable about this episode is when Thomas goes to the Steamworks, Kevin the Crane says, Give Cranky my best! That's kinda neat in hindsight. While probably not intentional at the time, it's a neat little setup to when they finally meet a few seasons later. Kevin had never met Cranky, but probably heard of him. But I'll get to that. With this newfound limelight on him, Cranky was allowed to break out a bit during these seasons. Over time, they fed us little bits of characterization for him, such as him having pachyderm, pachyderm, patch, a fear of elephants. There's an elephant on the loose. An elephant? Wow! Where? Elephant. Huh. <laughs> In Percy's new friends and bubbling boilers, Cranky is shown befriending seagulls. One he even named Stuart, which is cute. Stuart, I nearly hit you! You should be more careful, little friend! Which is just a nice continuation of what they told us about Cranky and Seagulls before. We start seeing that Cranky's a little bit of a softie, and in spite of the rude remarks he makes to the engines, he does care about them. Under all that gruff beats a heart of gold! We see it in certain interactions. In Misty Island Rescue, he feels bad for Percy when Thomas is missing and he keeps a lookout for him. There's still no sign of him. Wow, I can't believe I just used Misty Island Rescue as a positive example of something. In Away From The Sea, Cranky makes a comment of worry to Salty's engine making funny noises. What with all the noises, Salty? Are you alright? In Kevin's Cranky Friend, Cranky sticks up for Kevin when he's being wrongfully demeaned by Topham. Oh, we're coming back to this one in a minute, don't worry. In Thomas the Quarry Engine, he joins in singing a little song with the others. Where the brass man's made diddly um, um, um. In Diesel and the Ducklings, he makes a comment about how awful Diesel is to the others. Why does he always have to act like that? It really says a lot when Cranky is the one commenting on how rude someone else is being. But the greatest shining example of Cranky's hidden heart of gold can be found in the movie Tale of the Brave. In this movie, Thomas believes Percy has run away from Sodor on a ship, and he yells up at Cranky to stop it. Stop the ship, Cranky! Stop the ship! Don't let it go! This is an emergency! Cranky has a moment of hesitation, contemplating if he should do it or not, but his good conscience gets him to hurl his hook out to grab the ship. Got it! He didn't think it through though, as the ship starts to rip him off the dock, in what is a very tense action scene. Cranky, screaming in agony as the ship horn blares and the metal of his structure groans, 
Salty yelling up at him. Gosh, it's all so exciting. The ship does stop in time, thank God, and Cranky doesn't go over. I told you I had it. He is severely damaged from the incident, though. It turns out it was all for nothing, as Percy wasn't on the ship. But it was a really endearing moment where Cranky showed his true colors and put himself in danger to help the engines. The little engines that he was once so rude to. We love to see character growth. The Andrew Brenner era, aka the Renaissance for Thomas, started with season 17, and the season kicked off with, wow, what are the odds, another cranky episode. I'm beginning to see a pattern emerge here. Kevin's cranky friend saw Cranky being overworked at the docks as per usual. However, this time it's a little more than he can handle. Despite his best efforts, the work is just too much for him, though he would never admit it. But maybe you could do with some help. Help? I don't need help. Sir Topham Hat decides to bring Kevin to the docks for a while to help Cranky out. This is such an inspired idea, putting the two Crane characters together, following up on that line from Kevin in Creaky Cranky earlier. Give Cranky my best. The docks? I've always wanted to go there, and I've always wanted to meet Cranky. Kevin looks up to Cranky and wants to do whatever he can to impress him. But Cranky just won't have it. He believes he doesn't need any help, and he keeps unfairly blaming his own shortcomings on him. That was all your fault, you silly little crane. Watching me all the time, you're making me nervous. Only after his trying to do everything himself lands Kevin in trouble, he admits that he could use a hand. He's doing a fine job there, matey. Yes, he certainly is. But why does he have to do it so cheerfully? Season 19 saw a cranky Christmas, in which Cranky accidentally dropped a crate. <gasps> Thinking he broke whatever is inside it, Cranky hides the crate from view and pretends he knows nothing about it when Thomas comes along and asks for it. Despite Cranky's efforts to keep it hidden, the crate is found, and it's revealed later that nothing was actually broken inside. It was filled with ice skates just jumbling around. It turned out it was just all the ice skates rattling about. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I felt when I dropped it. When you dropped it? No, no, no. All's well that ends well, I guess. Can't we just let it go? Let it go! Both of these episodes reveal something about Cranky that I think is very interesting. Cranky is very insecure. And the more I think about it, the more all of this makes sense. We established earlier that he's lonely up there in the sky and overworked, and that's why he's cranky. But I think it goes a little further than that. Here is my take on Cranky. Cranky has a high opinion of himself, no pun intended, and with that comes a reputation he has to uphold. Cranky is hard on himself. He won't admit it when he's overworked. Help! I don't need help! Or when he makes a mistake. That was all your fault, you silly little crane. Watching me all the time, you're making me nervous. Or even when he's just lonely. You're lonely, said Ben. I'm not, Cranky cranked. He can't face being judged, or looked down on, or thought little of in any regard. He puts on a gruff, tough guy, standoffish, grumpy exterior whenever he feels these insecurities. As we see in plenty of episodes, when Cranky is not under stress, he's actually kind of a fairly easygoing guy and he shows concern for the engines. He hides his true feelings when under pressure, and maybe, perhaps, that's why it's hard for him to make friends. He befriends seagulls not just because they land on his arm and keep him company, he befriends them because he knows they won't judge him. Kind of like how people with depression or social anxiety might rather seek out the company of dogs rather than other people. Now we all know the engines are better than that, most of the time. None of them have any ill will towards Cranky or will judge him. 
but that doesn't matter in Cranky's mind. His insecurities just sort of get the best of him, and he puts on the Cranky exterior to shield them. This revelation now brings us to Season 21, where this building up of insecurities reaches its breaking point. Season 21 saw a two-parter dedicated to Cranky. The first episode, called Cranky at the End of the Line, sees Cranky in a position of utter worry when he starts showing his age, and talk of big new fancy cranes starts swirling about. The fat controller was talking about these big new fancy cranes that can do all sorts of stuff. Pah! Who needs them? <laughs> His worries get the best of him as he starts overworking himself to prove to Sir Topham Hat that he's still capable, but it doesn't exactly go as he hoped. No <laughs> we see Cranky's insecurities reach an all-time max here. Never before has Cranky ever acted so insane. It seems almost out of character for him to get so worked up but I don't think it is. This seems more like the peak that it's all built up to, his breaking point. One night, as Cranky finally allows himself to sleep, he dreams his legs snap and he falls backward into the sea. Jesus Christ, can we rewind that for a second? Wow, this is kind of dark for a kid's show. Cranky dreamed he died, thrown into the sea because he wasn't useful anymore. He awakes suddenly. Everything seems fine. Until... Hey Chuck! <gasps> His darkest fear comes true. The new crane's name is Carly. And naturally, upon first witnessing her... Cranky begs Sir Topham Hatt to not scrap him. Don't get rid of me, sir, please! I'm not so old! And I really am a useful crane! <laughs> I know you are, Cranky. Very useful indeed. He doesn't, of course, and explains Carly is here to help because of Cranky being so overworked. We'll soon have these docks running smoothly again. <laughs> now that was interesting. Note how his immediate reaction to being told Carly is there to help him is not gratuity or relief, it's anger. After all he's been through, he's angry someone is there to help him. That says a lot, doesn't it? He takes it as a blow to his ego. In any other average Thomas episode, Cranky would probably just be relieved and the story would just end here. But there's a bit more to explore character-wise. This leads into part two, where Cranky has to force himself to allow Carly to help him. For years, Cranky has tried to do everything on his own and not show his true feelings, so this is going to be a difficult adjustment for him. To make matters worse, Carly is a natural and is seemingly able to do everything herself with ease. See that? She's doing everything while I'm just standing here twiddling my hook. And good old Salty is there for him to vent to. I love that even though him and Salty don't really ever see eye to eye, Salty is still a constant loyal figure there for him. Someone for him to express his frustrations to, and take advice from. If anyone knows Cranky the best, it's Salty. After a montage of the two trying to one-up each other, Cranky and Carly get tangled up, and learn they have to pull together if they want to get anywhere. Pretty standard moral for a kid's show, but Cranky changes. After they learn to pull together, Cranky seems happy. He's laughing and having a good time. At the end of the episode, after we think the story has pretty much wrapped up, we get one more reveal. What? Big Mickey finally speaks. And they give us a little explanation why he's been silent for all these years. So now you speak? You've been standing there silent all these years, Big Mickey, and you've never said a single word. Well, you've never said a single word to me either. This is a big heaping spoonful of fan service, no question. 
but this little interaction is consistent with Cranky's character, and I think it adds a little more to him. He never let people in, and never tried to speak words to the crane who has been right there this entire time. Friendship was only meters away, and Cranky's insecurities caused him to stay silent for years. All's well that ends well, though, as the three put differences aside, and cheer on together as a team, forever a unit moving forward. For years, Cranky let his insecurities control his actions. He got rude and grumpy and standoffish as a result of him not allowing himself to just make mistakes. As Gordon and James said in his very first episode, Cranes are airy fairy things, high up in the air, high opinions of themselves, with reputations to live up to. At least, they think they do. And when Cranky didn't live up to this extremely unobtainable image he has of himself, he took it out on others, which made him seem cranky and standoffish and rude to the others, and it resulted in him being lonely, overworked, and scared. It's only when another crane arrives and he's forced to face this extreme fault in himself is Cranky finally happy, all personified with a crane. Quite a big character arc in what many view as a silly talking train show for kids, and it is. And that's why I appreciate it. It's something that I think even the adults watching with their kids can take something away from. Following the end of this story arc, you'll notice Cranky is never really shown to be unhappy again. He actually got a happy ending. This, on top of many other character arcs that seem to reach their conclusive ends this season, is why I view season 21 as, thematically, the final season of Thomas and Friends. Cranky got his happy ending. I don't want to see him revert back into a grump again. And thankfully, the Big World Big Adventures era didn't undo this character journey. He is hardly a major player again going into the Big World era. He pops up every now and then, but he's never given any major focus. But every time he does speak up, he never speaks words of insult or complaints. It's just him being a fellow worker. At this point in time, his name on his sides is just a remnant of his former self. For Cranky the Crane is no longer Cranky. Now, it may seem a bit pointless since there's only two to choose from, but if I were to pick one era of the show I think was best for the character, I'd have to give this one to the CGI series. Wow, the first time CGI was chosen in one of these. Look at that. Cranky is definitely one of those characters that benefited greatly from the switch to CGI. He was no longer a background piece of machinery at the dock set. He was a character, someone they had the freedom to play around with and weren't limited by what the prop could do. Even from the very, very first CGI episode, they immediately started using Cranky more as a character instead of a prop. There's just something to this guy. He's not just a gimmick to sell a brand new deluxe sized crane toy to go with your wooden railway set. Cranky is a fully realized character, complete with baggage and insecurities. Salty put it best, under all that gruff is a heart of gold. Oh,